Moffitt's race is run to a certain extent. Murray Carter is not in contention. But on the other hand, in such a short time already, Peter Brock is leading this race. is over one minute and 17 seconds ahead of John Goss. John Goss is still carrying the forward flag pretty well. He's uh, quite a way back, but he's well placed to do well if something goes wrong with those two leading cars. This would be a race that John Goss would dearly love to win. He's been trying for five years. And this is undoubtedly the main race on the Australian calendar. He'd love to knock it off. Gossie, probably the most popular driver competing here today at Mount Panorama. Bear in mind that John Goss is still well placed. John Goss and Kevin Bartlett have lost very little time in the pits and they're poised for success if any trouble afflicts these two cars or if the co-drivers go too slowly on this central and critical spell. And so, the crowd is starting to cheer and to go mad. The, the 20 deep crowd on pit straight waving their arms in unison as John Goss last pass. But things are really changing here. Fairly dry down the bottom but our cameras up top show it's pouring with rain at the top of the circuit and things are hazardous. Just after trying to cross the road along the curve past McPhillamy Park and bumped into the bank bloody heavily. It just rammed into the earth bank and uh, it got sort of caught in the gutter and with that blown oh, yeah, right front tyre I just couldn't get it to come back onto the road and it took about five or six hundred yards at very high speed to coax it back onto the road and I, I kept saying to myself over and over again you're going too fast, you've got to lose more speed and in the end I just seemed to be walking the car down towards Forest Elbow. The, the magnesium wheel started to break up under the car and I could hear fragments banging up under the chassis so I waited for a break in the traffic and drove across to the right hand side of Mountain Straight and put that damaged wheel on the grass and drove it all the way down on the grass to save it from breaking up. And in the meantime Goss has just about finished that changeover so he's out now whilst most of his sparring companions, his opposition, are coming in to do what he's just been forced to do. And in the lead is Kevin Butler, the old hand of racing. So badly injured earlier this year in a race at New Zealand, who would have thought he'd have recovered from those terrible injuries to be in a car leading Bathurst in the closing lap of the race? What exciting lap. Oh, talk of excitement, things still happening, cars spinning on the circuit here. And there it is, one lap to go, 6.2 kilometres. A marvellous challenge from Forbes in a tremendously well-judged, well-driven, well-prepared race by Goss, by Bartlett and by their team manager, Max McLeod. It is Kevin Bartlett who takes the chequered flag to win the 1964 Hardy Frodo 1000 for John Goss and it's a, an elated John Goss in the pit who at last has won the Hardy Frodo 1000. 